Hello, and welcome to Game Theory. I'm Professor Naomi Utkoff of the United States Naval Academy. In this video, we'll define the differences and explore the relationships among actions, strategies, and the path of play. In static games of complete information, we made no distinction between actions and strategies as there was no element of timing. However, actions and strategies diverge in dynamic games of complete information, and since the game unfolds sequentially, we will now speak of a path of play. We'll begin by defining actions, since the actions are the building blocks of both strategies and paths of play. Here's the game tree from Dynamic Battle of the Sexes again. It has three non-terminal nodes, each of which has an associated action space. Each action space belongs to the player whose move it is at the associated node. The man has one move, so he has one action space. The woman has two moves, so she has two action spaces, one action space per move. The man's action space is labeled in blue both in the list and on the tree. His sole action occurs at the first move of the game. He selects one of boxing or ballet, his two available actions. The woman has two action spaces. First, let's consider the action space in blue in the list and on the tree. This action space is her action space conditional on the man selecting the action boxing. We indicate this history by writing her action followed by a vertical line followed by his action. We read the vertical line as conditional on. So ballet, vertical line boxing, indicates the woman selects action ballet conditional on the man selecting boxing. If you don't like the vertical line or it gets cumbersome, we can use font or some such to indicate that the woman is selecting an action from the action space that follows the man's selection of boxing. In this example, we italicize the woman's action to indicate that she is selecting from the action space conditional on the man going boxing. Now, for the woman's action space conditional on the man selecting ballet. This action space is in blue in the list and on the tree. We use bold font for the woman's action here a shorthand to indicate that she is selecting from the action space conditional on the man going to the ballet. Looking at the tree and recalling our definition of the extensive form, we see that the specification of a dynamic game of complete information includes a description of each action space, but does not include a description of players' respective strategy spaces. The expectation is that the game theorist will identify the strategy spaces on an as-needed basis using the descriptions of the action spaces. In light of this requirement, we'll explain how to construct a player's strategies from her action spaces. The definition here is fairly formal. A strategy belonging to some player is a set of actions consisting of exactly one action from each of that player's action spaces. In other words, a player must have a complete plan for the play of the game. At the dawn of time, before the first move of the game is made, the player knows what she will do at each and every move, so that in the event that move is reached during the play of the game, she will have already selected an action to take at that time. First, let's identify the man's strategy space. He has a single move, so his action space and strategy space coincide. Here is his strategy boxing in blue. And here is his strategy ballet, also in blue. Now, here is the woman's strategy space. She has two moves, so each of her strategies is a pair of actions, one action to be taken if the man goes boxing, and the other to be taken if he goes to the ballet. It is of no game-theoretic consequence that she takes only one of the actions during the play of the game. To specify a strategy, she must have a complete plan. Here is her strategy, italic boxing, bold boxing. We might informally refer to this strategy as boxing no matter what. Here is her strategy, italic boxing, bold ballet. We might informally refer to this strategy as follow the man. Here is her strategy, italic ballet, 
bold boxing. We might informally refer to this strategy as avoid the man. Finally, here is her strategy italic ballet, bold ballet. We might informally refer to this strategy as ballet no matter what. Now we come to the last of the three subjects of this video, the path of play. We'll first define a path of play and give some examples. Like our definition of strategy, our definition of path of play is on the formal side. Informally, and perhaps more usefully, the path of play is the play of the game that you would observe if you watched it from beginning to end. There are four paths of play in Dynamic Battle of the Sexes. There is a unique path of play leading to each terminal node. Here, the man goes boxing and the woman follows him. Here, the man goes boxing and she goes to the ballet. Here, the man goes to the ballet and she goes to the boxing match. Even though the previous outcome and this outcome have the same payoffs, they are different outcomes and therefore different terminal nodes. Here, the man goes to the ballet and the woman follows him there. Note that these paths of play do not specify the woman's strategy, merely the action she took. Finally, we explain how to identify the path of play associated to a particular strategy profile. The man has two strategies and the woman has four strategies, so there are eight strategy profiles. Each strategy profile induces a path of play. There are only four paths of play, so it must be the case that different strategy profiles can induce the same path of play. We'll fill out the first two rows of this table together. I encourage you to do the remaining six rows yourself. Suppose the man plays boxing, in blue in the table and on the tree, and the woman plays boxing conditional on the man playing boxing, and boxing conditional on the man playing ballet, in red in the table and on the tree. Since the man's strategy is in fact boxing, the woman's strategy tells her to follow him. This sequence of actions is the path of play. The other action in the woman's strategy, boxing conditional on the man playing ballet, is faded to pink here to indicate that it is off the path of play because the man did not go to the ballet. Suppose now that the man plays boxing, still in blue in the table and on the tree but instead that the woman plays boxing conditional on the man playing boxing and ballet conditional on the man playing ballet in red in the table and on the tree. Since the man does in fact play boxing, the woman's strategy tells her to follow him there. This sequence of actions is the path of play. The other action in the woman's strategy, ballet conditional on the man playing ballet, is faded to pink to indicate that it is off the path of play because the man did not, in fact, go to the ballet. These two different strategy profiles induce the same path of play. However, most people consider one of these strategy profiles more sensible than the other. If you consider one of these profiles more sensible than the other, take a moment to note which profile you consider more plausible. We'll return to this idea in the next video. The remaining six strategy pairs and the induced paths of play are listed here. To check your understanding, take a few minutes to verify that this table is correct. Thanks so much for watching this video about actions, strategies, and paths of play. In the next video, we'll introduce Selton's chain store paradox and begin our discussion of credibility in dynamic games.